SA-42 on the derivation of solar system orbits from the antisymmetric connection. Scientists have always been interested in describing orbits in the solar system ever since the existence of planets was realized as stars that appeared to move. Copernicus uh, dared to think that the Earth went around the Sun and was therefore one of the planets. The influence of Aristotelian thought meant that the orbit was assumed uncritically to be a circle. Astronomers such as uh, Galileo Galilei and Tycho Brahe made uh, careful measurements of the path of the planets and comets. Johannes Kepler, Imperial Mathematicus at uh, Prague, was the first to uh, infer that the orbit of the planet Mars was an ellipse, not a circle. This story is brilliantly told by Arthur Kessler in his book The Sleepwalkers. The irascible Tycho Brahe's data uh, were analysed in um, astounding detail by Kepler before he slowly and painfully came up with his famous three planetary laws. These were rational laws of the scientific enlightenment, not the idols of the cave still relied upon by the epicyclists. It is still thought that it was Isaac Newton who rationalised Kepler's uh, laws into uh, one famous inverse square law of universal gravitation. But my ancestral cousin, John Aubrey FRS, clearly revealed the truth in the uh, 17th century in his classic Brief Lives, short biographies of uh, contemporaries. It was uh, Robert Hooke who gave Newton the idea in correspondence from Christchurch College, uh, Oxford, to um, Trinity, Trinity College, Cambridge. Newton uh, developed the idea with the technique of differential calculus, which he named fluxions. The Newtonian synthesis is a, is a pinnacle of human thought, but uh, let us give due uh, credit to Robert Hooke. From one inverse square law of attraction between the Sun and a given object in the solar system, it is possible to derive the three Kepler laws analytically, but um, uh, not uh, using Newtonian methods. Um, Lagrangian methods must be used. The orbits of uh, planets, meteors and meteorites, rocks, satellites and dust particles uh, were thought for a long time to be ellipses. Let Newton be and all is light, but uh, there were shadows in the age of reason. As measurements uh, became more precise, it was found that uh, the ellipses moved a little from year to year. This phenomenon was known in a frighteningly obscure way as the precession of the perihelion. There are other phenomena in the solar system which cannot be described by the Newtonian dynamics. Following upon his inference of a field equation of general relativity in about uh, 1915, Albert Einstein began to turn his attention on how to prove his theory with astronomical observations in the solar system. At first, Einstein thought that his equation would have no mathematical solution, but uh, two solutions were found very elegantly in 1916 by Karl Schwarzschild. It is uh, very important to realize that these are not what is now known in careless obsolete places, such as Wikipedia, as the uh, Schwarzschild metric. Uh, this concept was introduced by someone other than uh, Schwarzschild. By now it is well known from AIS.us and leading journals such as uh, the Journal of Foundations of Physics and Chemistry that there are several irretrievable flaws in the Einstein field equation, the fatal flaw being the neglect of space-time torsion. This is the same as using the wrong choice of symmetry for the geometrical connection of Christopher. 
inferred in about 1867. It took about until 2007 to realize that the Christopher connection must be anti-symmetric in his lower two indices as summarized in earlier essays and UF2 papers on ARAS.us. In UFT189 it is shown that uh, solar system orbits can indeed be described with the anti-symmetric Christopher connection. In a spherically symmetric universe there are only two non-vanishing elements of the anti-symmetric connection. The metric of such a universe is a diagonal one that is described in terms of two functions m and n, each a function of time and the radial coordinate r. The anti-symmetric connection is found from this metric using one metric compatibility equation and the fundamental uh, theorem of the preceding SA41. The connections are constrained by the exact and powerful identity inferred from Carton's uh, differential geometry and which is proven precisely in UFT137. I describe this as the Carton-Evans identity for the sake of uh, nomenclature. The constraint equations produce an analytical result for the metric function m and n and uh, an equation of orbits. For the solar system, the metric of function m can be chosen to be a solution of the constraint equation that closely resembles the wrongly name, named uh, Schwarzschild metric, so the orbits of uh, planets can be described with only one anti-symmetric connection and one metric of function m, which gives a precessing ellipse. This is an elegant result based on a method that can be extended to all known orbits, so the whole of cosmo cosmology is described self-consistently without the use of uh, fictitious dark matter. In contrast, the Einstein field equation is incorrect and its uh, solution requires many connections, all of which are incorrect. The so-called uh, Schwarzschild solution of the Einstein field equation was pulled out of the blue. It is still not clear to me or to anyone who the conjurer actually was. It was uh, certainly not uh, Schwarzschild himself. The obsolete method of describing solar system orbits was therefore essentially empirical and the stopgap measure of dark matter also empirical. The new uh, method is reasoned out right from the beginning from the correct geometry, one that correctly includes space-time torsion. I think that this method will come to be seen as a major advance in cosmology, at least uh, by those with enlightened minds.